To understand the code that we're going to write, and also to understand a little bit better how sensors work with the Cutie Pie, we need to talk a little bit about how sensors are connected. There are three aspects to this connection. There's the protocol that the sensors use to talk, there's the actual connections themselves, and then there's the physical wiring that's done to hook the sensors together. So we'll talk about each of those in turn. One of the communications protocols that's available on the QTPI RP2040 is called I squared C. It's a very simple communications protocol that only requires two wires. One of the wires controls the clock, which controls the timing of the communications, and the other one controls the data that are passed between the devices in this communication chain. The protocol only requires two wires, and if you look at the wires here, you will see that there are four in the connections, but only two of them are actually used for communication. All of the devices that are connected to the QTPI share the same two wire connections, and so you can chain together several sensors. Each of those sensors is identified by a unique address, so when the communication is sent out on the I squared C system, all of the sensors get the information, but they only pay attention if they are addressed by their unique identifier. The QTPI RP2040 actually has two controllers that can communicate using the I squared C protocol. The way that you access these controllers is different. The I squared C controller zero is accessed through these two metal pads that are directly on the circuit board of the microcontroller. If you want to use those, you have to solder wires onto them. The other I squared C connection, I squared C1, is connected through this Stemma QT connector. Because there are two different I squared C connections, if you're talking about them in code, you may have to distinguish between the two of them. I squared C0 is the most typical one that's used, and so it is addressed simply as SCL and SDA for the clock and the data lines. If you want to use the Stemma QT connector, which we typically do, then we have to differentiate it by using SCL1 and SDA1. Because of this, sometimes code examples that you find on a website will need to be modified. In places where the code says board.scl and board.sda, you may have to substitute board.scl1 and board.sda1 if you're connecting by plugging into this Stemma QT connector. The Stemma QT connector is a very easy way of making I squared C connections. It's much easier than having to do soldering. The connector is also pretty foolproof. If you look at the top view and the bottom view, you can see that there's only one way to insert the connector. The side with the exposed pins is the bottom side, so it should be pointed down. When you press it into the connector, you press it in as far as it'll go until it's firmly seated, and it typically is seated well enough that it won't just fall out. If you want to disconnect, then you can just grab the connector by the two ends here and pull and wiggle a little bit, and usually it will come out without too much trouble. It doesn't matter which of the two connectors on a sensor board you use, you can use either one. The second one is there if you want to chain an additional sensor into the I squared C network.